Shalom, brothers and sisters, and welcome to this week's Sabbath service. I've been sick, and at the same time, also have a lot of family gatherings and things to go to, so today is just going to be a short message. And I want to start off by reading a scripture from Doctrines of the Saints. This is section 91, a revelation given to us through the prophet James Strang. And I'm going to read the ending of this section, starting in verse 36. Come and from this time forward assist my servants who are building a house unto my name and who are proclaiming my word unto the nations, that they may enjoy this blessing with them. For only they who labor shall receive the reward, and those who labor to build my house and to proclaim my word and to establish my kingdom I will make saviors. And upon Mount Zion shall they stand with crowns upon their heads. Even so, amen. So I want to... What I originally felt to talk about in this first worship service of the new year is really just the future, where we're planning on going in 2023 with the fellowship. Now, a couple things I want to mention. One is that we are looking to meet in person three times this year. I'm not sure how well this is going to work out. We're looking at renting a cabin in July perhaps renting a library room in April, and then meeting in Missouri for Sukkot in, I believe it's October. So we'll talk more about all that later, but it's pretty exciting, this idea of, of being able to meet up in person. We've attempted it in the past, and it's been interesting. It's hard for people all over the world to travel to one location. So if people can can make it that's great if they can't then that's fine too um, we're not going to make zoom services or google meet services for all of these but we'll do our best to accommodate people i will tell you though that when we meet in person one of the reasons why we'll be meeting is to ordain people so those that are looking to be ordained by laying on of hand this is our opportunity to do so. The other goal that I personally have for 2023 is to basically get myself off of these Sabbath service videos. I don't mind doing them. I've mentioned this before. It just takes a bit of time and it's time I could be spending doing other things for the fellowship. And I think that's the reason why the Lord impressed upon my mind to read this particular scripture. It's great. I love that people are watching the videos. I'm, I'm really happy that we're able to serve those that need these worship services. At the same time, the Lord needs people to step up and help out. We have a couple of volunteers to begin sharing messages this year. So hopefully we'll very quickly get to a point to where every week it's someone different speaking and not merely me. And the reason why this is so important to me isn't just the time factor. It's also the, the day factor. This is the Church of Jesus Christ, not the Church of Dave Fairman. This is the Kingdom of God, not the Kingdom of Dave. And the more that we see me as the mascot, I personally just find that that, that takes away from the Savior. I don't think that anyone should be following one person male or female. I think that the Lord sends prophets, seers, revelators, apostles, and other leaders to help bring people to Jesus Christ. But at the end of the day, this isn't about me. It's, it's about Jesus. This is his fellowship. This is the fellowship of Christ. And so I fear that the more people see of me, the more it becomes about me. And I'm not Pat Robertson. This isn't the 700 Club. So we need it to be about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And in order to do that, we need to have more faces representing the fellowship. And we need to have faces of men, women, of all genders, gender orientation, of all races, of all cultures, so that everyone can be represented in this fellowship. And that is very, very important 
to both myself and Christine. Uh, it's but we came from a church that was led by white men and we always felt that that was a bit ridiculous. You can't tell me that there aren't enough people of other races or other genders in that particular branch of the Latter-day Saint movement. And yet, here we are. Now, to be quite frank, the majority of people that come to the fellowship are white men. So maybe the Latter-day Saint movement is something that just attracts white guys for some reason. I don't know. I'm probably going to be... I'm sure someone's going to have something to say to the fact that I said that. But the, the reality is, at the end of the day, we need to be more diverse. We need to have more people visible in the fellowship of, like I said, all genders, all races. And we need to make sure that we are being as inclusive as possible. The Lord's going to call who the Lord's going to call. I understand and respect that. Part of that calling is you, the listener, recognizing the call, accepting it, and moving forward in Christ. We don't do missionary work in the traditional evangelical style. We don't go door to door. We don't go looking, seeking people to join. What we do is we send out a light. We are a lighthouse. And those that the Lord sends to us are those that need to be here. We need to do a better job of being a lighthouse by representing more people than just white European men. We need sisters that are not afraid to speak up. We need people that don't have to stay hidden because they're afraid of being excommunicated from their churches. And we need prophets, seers, revelators in order to, to be a prophetic people to teach those that have been called to the ministry. One of the greatest mistakes that I see in, in the Latter-day Saint movement is people getting callings because of who they are and they're based on their walk of life or the Lord does call them. But then they don't get trained up on how to do the responsibilities they've been called to do. And so Alan and I are working on a school in the prophets with some other people that are interested in helping with this. But we need to be moving forward and teaching people how to be ministers in Christ's name. We need to help people recognize their call and teach them how to magnify that call. We don't need people hiding because they, they don't know how to do the job they've been called to do. So as we move forward, one of the most important things that we need to focus on as a people is training one another on how to fulfill the things that the Lord needs us to fulfill. We are working on building a tabernacle. We're looking for some sort of a contractor. We have the design, but we need someone that can price out the materials so we can actually put things on the website to say, this is exactly how much it's going to cost. This is exactly how much we're trying to raise so that we can get these buildings together start with one one tent one tabernacle but as we grow we'll need more and as we grow we'll need permanent structures in which case then we'll need architects and so on and so forth so there's a lot of work to be done now i will tell you i have a couple of decades of adult training so the idea of a school of profit does not seem daunting to me but the idea of building a temple, building a tabernacle, I am not the best builder. And so that is a little bit more daunting to me. And we need to have the right people in place to help us accomplish these goals. 
Now, I know this isn't the most spiritually uplifting message that I could provide for you today. But I want you to understand that this isn't just a podcast. This is an actual organization that's trying to move forward in the name of Christ to represent Jesus Christ. And to do this, we have to work together as one. We have to find our common ground and figure out how we're going to do this together. How we're going to step out of the shadow and into the light of Jesus Christ so that we can be the light of the world that we've been called to be. And I know it's not an easy task. I know a lot of you are hurting. I know a lot of you have been burnt by other churches. And again, I don't like calling this a church. We're trying to move away from the church into the kingdom. It's one of the reasons why we have the two separate websites. I know there are people that want a church and we need to have that as we're moving. We're, we're moving from the, the church to the kingdom. 2023 has a lot of promise. There's a lot that can be done if we're willing to put our shoulders to the wheel and do the work. It's not a work that I can do alone. It's not a work that Alan and I can do alone. It's not a work that the others that are helping in the background who don't want to be named and I can do alone. It's a work that is going to take many, many hands. And the more hands that we find to help, the more hands we're actually going to need. So I want to, first off, offer a thank you to the three brothers that have offered to share messages for these Sabbath services. I'm really looking forward to moving forward in a new direction where we have more people talking and we hear more voices. I would like to encourage the sisters to come forward. We want to hear your voices. Our transgender brothers and sisters and those that don't identify as male or female we want to hear your voices. Those of the various races of the world, we want to hear your sacred story. We want to hear your voices. Other members of the LGBTQ community, I shouldn't just single out transgender. We want to hear from you. We want to hear about your struggles. Because as you tell your sacred stories, you are going to be encouraging other people to share their secret sacred stories. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, this idea of, of minorities needing to hear their voices confuses you, I would encourage you to go on Facebook and check out the Sisters of Zion. They are two black American sisters that are in the Salt Lake City Church and dealing with the prejudices of being black in a very white dominated church with a very white culture. I have cried with some of the th videos and, and testimonies that they've shared and I've rejoiced with some of the videos and testimonies that they've shared. They are a voice that needs to be heard among their people and among all the Latter-day Saint people. And I also want to talk to those who are in marriages that are not, well, they are more traditional, but they're not, they're the, the type that seem to be a bit taboo among a lot of Latter-day Saints, whether it be polygamists, same-sex marriages, or any other type of marriage, your voice needs to be heard too. We need to hear from one another. One of the greatest fights, battles in our movement is the monogamous versus the polygamous. When in my mind, it's a ridiculous fight. It's no one's business. As long as everyone is consenting adults. How do we break through the stigma? How do we break through by sharing our sacred stories? When we hear from those with an opposing view, gently through the Holy Spirit, it doesn't matter if you're a polygamist, LGBTQ, a woman in a very male-dominated religion, suddenly that perceived threat can go away. 
because we can realize and recognize that these people just want a seat at the table. They don't want to change everybody. They don't want everyone to be a polygamist or LGBTQ or what have you. They just want to be heard. And I'm going to tell you right now, if I'm the one talking, we're not hearing from these brothers and sisters. We're not hearing their sacred stories. And that's why it's so important. I hear your stories all the time. And they are amazing. They're heartbreaking. They're spiritually uplifting. And they're real. And they bridge that gap that, the, that Satan uses to divide us as Latter-day Saints. These stories need to be told, but not by me, by you. They're your stories. We as saints need to hear them so that we can grow together in Christ. And we can understand where we're coming from as a people, as one people. I'm going to close today by reciting the Shema because to me, the Shema is what the fellowship is all about. Unity. Shema Yisrael. Yiva Elohenu. Yiva Echad. Hear, O Israel. Yiva is our Elohim. Yiva is unity. We cannot be a fellowship without that unity. We cannot be a fellowship without being united in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's my message for you as we bring in this new year. How can we be one in Christ? How can we be more united as a people? How can we be more united as Latter-day Saints? Let's spend 2023 answering that question. That's my message. And I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.